Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem called sum of k mirror numbers. It sounds a bit strange, but don't worry, we'll break it down into simple, easy to understand pieces. Let's get started. Okay, so the problem asks us to find the sum of the first n numbers that have a special property. These are called k mirror numbers. So what does that mean? A number is a k mirror number if it's a palindrome in two different systems. First, it has to be a palindrome in our normal base 10 system. Think of numbers like 121 or 4884. Second, it also has to be a palindrome when you write it in a different base, which the problem calls k friend. So it's like the number has to be a palindrome in English and in French. It has to satisfy both rules at the same time. Our job is to find the first n of these numbers and add them all up. Let's walk through the first example to make this concrete. We're given k equals 2, meaning we're interested in base 2, or binary. And n equals 5, so we need to find the first 5 of these special numbers. The first few are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Let's check one of them, say the number 9. In base 10, is 9 a palindrome? Yes, any single digit number is. Rule 1 is passed. Now let's convert 9 to base 2. That gives us 1001. Is that a palindrome? Yes, it reads the same forward and backward, so 9 is a 2 mirror number. We do this until we find 5 such numbers, and then we just add them up to get our answer, which is 25. So, what's the first idea that comes to mind? Well, we could just start counting from 1 and check every single number. For number 1 we check both conditions. Then for 2, then 3, and so on. But, these k-mirror numbers can be pretty far apart. We might end up checking thousands or even millions of numbers just to find the next one. This brute force approach would be way too slow and would time out on a larger test case. We need a more clever way. Instead of checking every single number in the universe, what if we only check numbers that are already promising candidates? We have two conditions, right? A palindrome in base 10 and a palindrome in base k. It's actually pretty easy to generate all the base 10 palindromes directly. Think about it like this. If you're looking for red cars, you could look at every car on the road, or you could go to a factory that only makes red cars. Generating the palindromes first is like going to that factory. It drastically cuts down our search space. So how do we generate all base 10 palindromes in increasing order? It's a neat trick. Let's start with a counter. Say the number 12. We can create two palindromes from this. First, an odd length one. We take the string 1, 2, and we attach a reversed version of its first part, which is just 1. This gives us 1, 2, 1, or 121. Second, an even length one. We take the whole string 1, 2, and we attach its complete reversal 2, 1 to the end. This gives us 1, 2, 2, 1. If we do this for every number starting from 1, then 2, then 3, and so on, we will systematically generate all possible base 10 palindromes. Here is the full Python code for this generative approach. Now I know this might look like a lot at first glance, but don't worry. We're going to break it down into its simple core parts. First, we have two small helper functions. The is underscore palindrome function is straightforward. It just takes a string and checks if it's equal to its reverse. Simple. The to underscore base underscore k function is what handles the conversion. It takes a number and the base we want to convert it to. It works by repeatedly taking the number, dividing it by the base, and using the remainder as the next digit. It keeps doing this until the number becomes zero, building up the representation in the new base. This is the heart of our solution. We have a main while loop that keeps running until we've found our n numbers. Inside, it does two things. First, it has a loop that generates all the odd length palindromes of a certain length. For each one it creates, it checks if it's a k-mirror number and, if so, adds it to our sum. Then, it does the exact same thing for even length palindromes. After checking all palindromes of a certain length, it increments the length variable and the whole process repeats for longer palindromes until we find all the numbers we need. Now let's talk about a completely different way to solve this which is a classic contest strategy. If you look closely at the problem constraints, the base k is always small, from 2 to 9, and n, the number of mirror numbers we need, is also small, at most 30. When the inputs are this limited, we can do something really clever. We can run our generative program on our own machine once, for each possible value of k proves. We find the first 30 answers for base 2, base 3, and so on, all the way to base 9. Then, we just hard code these answers into our solution. The code for this approach looks almost like a joke, but it's incredibly effective. We have a big table, a list of lists, 
which I'm calling A N S here. Each inner list contains the pre-calculated sums for a specific base k perk. The first list is for k equals 2, the second for k equals 3, and so on. Our actual function then becomes trivial, it just takes k and n, and uses them as coordinates to look up the correct answer directly from our table. This is the fastest possible solution at runtime. So how do our two methods compare in terms of efficiency? The first approach, where we generate the palindromes, is much faster than brute force. Its speed depends on how large the numbers we need to find are. The memory it uses is pretty small, just enough to hold the number as a string in base k fix. The second approach, the pre-computation trick, is unbeatable. At runtime, it's big O of 1, or constant time. It doesn't matter what k or n are, it takes the same tiny amount of time to just look up the answer. The space is also constant, because our table of answers never changes in size. Alright, let's recap the main ideas. First, when you see a problem like this, remember that brute force checking of every number is usually a trap, it's often too slow. The big lesson here is the generate, don't check principle. Instead of testing every number against your rules, see if you can build numbers that already follow some of the rules. This can save a massive amount of time. And finally, always pay attention to the constraints. If they are small and fixed, you might be able to use a powerful shortcut, like pre-calculating all the answers. I hope that breakdown was helpful and made sense. If you found this useful, please hit that like button, and maybe subscribe for more explanations like this one. If you have any questions or a different way of thinking about it, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.